Welcome back, folks. We got the market slightly in the red right now. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Folks, every trading day, forex-trading-unlock.com. If you're into the Forex market, I encourage you to check out Teddy's work at his website. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour talking Forex. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Good morning. How are you guys doing today? We're doing great, man. Surviving the work week uh, through Wednesday. We got a little negative action in the markets uh, for a change this week. And uh, we got some currency action uh, as well. Where do you want to kick off in this market, man? Um, well, I don't think we need to talk about the crypto volatility because that's Ooh. showing with all that volatility that it doesn't wag the dog. The dog wags it. So we're not going to even dwell on that. Um, okay. Although it was a little, there was a little surge from that sell-off um, that did help the pound and the euro and even the dollar because you know as people liquidate bitcoins, they're they're converting it to some other currency. <laughs> um, but let's talk about the main factors here. Um, we've been talking about the 30-year note are very static right now, really not influencing the market. We have oil that kind of looks like it wants to maybe flirt with a little sell-off that could have a very, very good uh, implications as far as certain currencies. We'll see how that goes. And then we have the gold market that's flirting with a nice little breakout rally. So the question is, are we going to get follow through or do we have a bull trap building up in the U.S. dollar? Because everyone is so bearish the dollar right now that I think we're starting and we do have some signals. So let me give you the buy signals right now and the sell signals that we have. Okay. So the U.S. dollar Swiss we know has been breaking for the past couple months, right? It's in a little bit of a free fall. Well, yesterday, the U.S. dollar Swiss gave us a short-term Harami buy signal. If it settles positive today, that means it's a double signal. It'll be a three inside up buy signal, which it sets that market up for a nice corrective move to the upside. Now, remember, that market, except for the past few weeks, has been in a rally this year. So this where we're at right now, it's a corrective break that might be bottoming right now. That's a very significant thing right there, especially if it gets follow through over the next couple sessions. But we need confirmation of a positive close today. Key off of the low, the recent low, should we get a positive uh, close today, that's gonna be your base of support. The British pound US dollar also gave the same type of signal yesterday. It was a Harami sell signal. The British pound overall has been a bull for over a year. It's been correcting for the past few months, tr trying to basically go sideways over the past couple of weeks. If we get a negative close today, odds are very likely that the pound US dollar will continue to set a free fall, especially if oil starts to go, um, slide even more than it already is right now. OK, and then we have the euro US dollar, which has a very weak sell signal forming right now. I would key off of the high from yesterday as your uh as your uh level for resistance if you're a bear anything above there you're on the wrong side um it's a good selling level right now you know so i think that that's really where that those majors are falling into and one of the reasons where i think we're starting to see this bull trap form with the u.s dollar is that should oil really start to not really sell off but just continue to hit support and even if it gets below 60 and if gold continues to flirt with higher levels with the neutral interest rates that's kind of bullish the dollar in the short run okay so now when you look at like the u.s dollar canada which has just been beating up the dollar for over a year it does it, it for a while it looked like it was just snaking and trying to set a base and flirting with another break but now it's flirting with an upside correction breakout so i would key yeah. off of for the US dollar Canada, if we get a breach of 126.47, there's a good chance that the market will go up to 127.70. Now, that these, these are key things that should we get to these developments and these signals if they come to fruition over today and start to set these leads over the next couple of days, we may see a very strong bounce in the US dollar, especially with the stock market flirting with the possible correction right now in the S&Ps, because there is a gap to be filled from the beginning of the month. Nice. Yeah. And, you know, you look uh, in the last, not not the last one, but taking a look even is always interesting when you look at gold, of course, we've gotten a little mm -hmm. bit. And then um, the yen, as in we've had quite a pullback in that yen, man, going yep. back basically the month of April from 111 and we're back to 108 just that quick. But, you know, like you talk about the trend for the year, we've gone from 102 to 110 and we're back right. to 108. Uh, where are you looking at this dollar yen? Uh, dollar yen. Well, here's the way I look at the okay, dollar yen. 
Um, yeah, you're kind of coming in and out, but I got you. Um, the downside target for the yen okay, I have right thanks. now is about 107.5, okay? Um, I'd be very careful of a snapback rally. I think that the U.S. dollar yen, because gold prices are going up, oil is neutral to lower, and interest rates are flat, that's why you're getting this sell-off that's stretching in the yen. If we see a bounce in uh, a reversal of these other markets, especially if the interest rates start to tank and oil starts to go up again, then I think you're going to see the U.S. dollar yen snap back and make all new highs again. So I'd be very cautious selling the yen at these levels. I'd look more for a buy signal than a sell signal, especially since we have a signal in the Swiss. Usually one leads the other, and those are both flight to quality cur currencies. So if the Swiss really starts a rally, it's going to be hard to be selling the yen at the same time, or, or buying nice. the yen, meaning selling the U.S. dollar yen. No, that's great, man. That makes a lot of sense, tying those two together for sure. Um, yeah, we'll see. That's quite a pullback in the yen, but it's not a quite a pullback, like you say, when you look at the trend that we've been in basically since January, right. 102 to 111. Quite a move, right. and, and things have gotten a little um, dicey over the last couple of weeks in some of those currencies off of their trends. So, what's the weather like in Chicago, man? We got any golf on the agenda this no, week? No, not, not today. It's going to be only like a high of like 42 degrees today and Oof. possible rain this afternoon. So, we we're, everything is turning green, but the temperature is going back to normal April temperatures. We were lucky with a couple of hot days here That's there, That's so. spring in those cities, man. Boston yeah. has some of that. You get some heat. You get some cold. Uh, right. Well, we're almost in May. Hopefully, you're out well, of the Well, you 40s. guys got snow for the, for the Red Sox-White Sox game. The I <laughs> saw, man. They got, I know. We had they had snow uh, snow delays at the beginning of baseball season even right. um, to Absolutely. to kick things off. Well, Teddy, Absolutely. we appreciate the forex update as always, man. Uh, we look forward to the update next week, and you have yourself a great week, man. All right, we'll see how these signals shape up. See you next week. Thanks, guys. Awesome, man. Thanks, Teddy. Take care, folks. Every trading day, you can reach Teddy forex dash trading dash unlock.com. We talk to Teddy for our forex update on the weekly uh, every Wednesday at forty past the hour.